Finally, your CA foundation examinations are over. Hard work of 6 to 7 months starting in the month of May or June this year. Coming all the way till December. You guys have worked really hard. Really proud, proud of you people for going through the entire process. And what you've been waiting for, what I've been waiting for is finally here. And today I am going to discuss your CA foundation December 22 examination paper. Want to do this little while ago right after your first paper but didn't want to disturb the flow of examination. So waited very eagerly till the last paper and finally I here I am doing it. But before I go ahead and then do it, I was very eager to know how have you people done it. That's when I went on to ask the first question obviously is how many marks could you write for? Only 5% of the people in the poll told that they wrote for more than 100. 16% wrote for 90 to 100, 30% wrote for 75 to 90 and 24% people wrote to 60 to 75. So I can say only 24% of the people could not handle time and wrote for less than 60%. Rest of them could write for good amount of marks. The next question that I asked all of you people as to was which question did you find most difficult? And 20% uh, people told everything was easy. That's something that I'm very happy about. 27% people person people are telling that bills of exchange was a difficult question. Uh, indeed, I was mentioning it throughout. Don't take any chapter lightly. Don't follow the trend because ICA doesn't follow any trend. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, people used to think of this like, okay, usually only five to six marks come from bills of exchange that do not every attempt. And a lot of them, even when I met in marathon division, I had planned to skip this bills of exchange. And I remember talking one to one personally and telling don't skip any chapter, do it. At least do the accommodation part and surprise, surprise. 15 marks question from the chapter of bills of exchange. 18% people are telling NPO was difficult. 13% final accounts and company accounts 9%, BRS 5, rectification 3, depreciation 3. Fine. That's what you say. Let me see what I have to say after I analyze the question paper. Then let's see the next thing is... We had another poll, last poll. So this poll was about overall how was the paper. 10% people told excellent. 22% tells very good. 42% good. 23% okay okay. And 3% told it was bad. So there are hardly 3% people are saying bad and 23% people saying okay okay. So I am expecting a really good result in this very uh, result. But why waste time? Come on, let me do the analysis on this paper. So this is the paper which you saw ahead of me in the examination. So I got hands on the paper only at 5 p.m. after people came out. Mm, usual working note should form part of the answer. Question number one compulsory. Six questions of 20 marks each, 120 marks. You need to write four out of the remaining five questions. So first question as usual is true or false. The first part of the question is the financial statements are not prepared on the assumption that the enterprise is a going concern. The moment you hear the word going concern, what should have come to your mind is an organization neither has an intention nor a necessity. I hope you're telling it loud now as well. So to close on its operations in the near future. After you wrote these two lines in your answer uh, in the book, in the class book, right below that I had made you write one beautiful point saying that financial statements are prepared because of going concern. No going concern, no balance sheet. Accounts should have become easy and everyone can do accounts themselves and they wouldn't need us. That is the exact words that I told that day. I hope you people remember. Yeah. And the same thing was in fact covered in our class as well. So have a look here. Question number 1A. Sub question 1 talks about, it's a true or false question. It's on going concern concept. This is from the chapter 1 by 1 theoretical framework. It is based on concepts and conventions topic. And we have covered this in our app tab, Accounts Progress Tracker 1.2. Let me show it to you as to where is it in our Accounts Progress Tracker. So if you see 1.2, our Accounts Progress Tracker, this is it, which test all of you have taken. I hope you remember taking up this. And um, down here, reason for discount, no preparation of, yeah, preparation of financial statements is based on what? Answer is going concern concept. We had this question in your app tab, you have taken it and the very same question has come. So the reason for preparation of financial statements is going concern. You get that? I will be detailedly discussing the answers in a different video. This is just analysis. Second question, periodic inventory system. Uh -huh. 
periodic inventory system is a method of ascertaining inventory chapter 4 inventory based chapter periodic perpetual one lazy guy dozing off sleeping one active guy keeping daily records i told if you keep daily records it would need more brain more money more records it would cost more money as well that is fifo lifo sam vam and under periodic method we will use cogs formula to identify it is less time taking but it is not scientific approach remember that we would have done that just before stock reconciliation and this question whatever is asked in the examination was also discussed in our class and i had also questioned this to you people sub question 2 chapter number 4 valuation of inventory so this is on the topic of stock reconciliation true or false question for two marks and this we have covered in our apta 4 really sir let me show have a look here so this is the apta that you took for chapter 4 Accounts progress tracker by accounts man. So in this, let me show it to you as to where is it. Periodic, periodic, periodic. Not this. 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 This also. See, not here. 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 Have a look here. Match the following. Periodic and perpetual. Here we told perpetual is not COGS formula. Day-wise records are kept. Scientific and can be verified. And uh, periodic system is where we use COGS formula. I will show you the answer so that you guys can understand. The periodic system is where COGS formula is used. No device record, not scientific. Physical count is the basis for identifying the inventory. Physically, we count the inventory to identify the stock. We discussed this. It was a two-pointer question in our APTA. And come here, physical periodic inventory system is a method of ascertaining inventory by taking an actual physical count. Very same point was hit in our class right there. Four marks straight from uh, what we have discussed in APTA. Then, provision for discount on creditors is often not provided in keeping with conservatism. Conservatism, again, this third sub question is from chapter 1 theoretical framework concepts and conventions. Basically, conventions of conservatism. Pro or false question for two marks. This was again covered in our 1.2 APTA. Really? Yeah, very truly. Let me show. In our 1.2, where we spoke about conventions, of convention of conservatism i told you guys very clearly that we need to account for account for all expected expenses and losses but not for expected incomes and gains remember that same thing when you expect profit when you create provision for doubtful debts that is because you don't expect money in the future the money receivable won't come it's an expected expense or loss so we record it whenever you talk about provision for creditors Discount on creditors. We don't record it because conservatism. If you guys remember, couple of days, no, not couple, a week before exam, there was a reel on Pushpa. Ah, Same thing. Jukeganai, creditors will not decrease. Creditors will increase. Same point. Provision for discount on creditors. I'll show you the APTA question as well. Have a look here. Conservatism. See, conservatism emanates what? Account for all expected expenses and losses, but not for expected incomes and gains. I'll show you the key answer is well. See here. Account for all expenses and losses. Do not account for expected incomes and gains. Same is the point, no? So, very good. That's the third one. Let's go to fourth one. If errors are detected after preparing trial balance, then all the errors are rectified through suspense account. When we started chapter 2.8, rectification of errors, we discussed no stages at which the error can be rectified. Stage 0, scratch and rewrite. Stage 1, before trial balance. Stage 2, after trial balance. Stage 3, after final accounts. And in each of that, we wrote one sided, two sided, one sided, two sided, one sided, two sided, one sided, two sided. One sided errors, we should rectify using suspense. Two sided errors, we should not use suspense account at all. However, at first stage, we have that adjustment and journal entry. Second and third stage, journal entry, journal entry, journal entry, journal entry. If it is one-sided, journal entry with suspense. If it is two-sided, journal entry without suspense. And to our surprise, again this fourth true or false question, which is chapter 2, unit 8, accounting process, rectification of errors for two marks was also covered in our accounts progress tracker. Uh -huh. Sir, can you prove it to us? I like you people for this because you wouldn't believe anything without proof. Come on, let me show it to you as to where was it covered. 
Aha. How to rectify errors? If you talk about one-sided errors, if you talk about one-sided errors before trial balance, adjustment. Two-sided errors before trial balance, journal entry with suspense. One-sided errors after trial balance, journal entry with suspense. Two-sided errors without suspense. One-sided error with suspense. Two-sided errors without suspense. So we are told very clearly that with the suspense comes only for one-sided errors. Two-sided errors will not involve suspense account. So this question what needed us to answer is that if errors are detected after trial balance, they are telling always through suspense. No, 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 no. Answer is false. It is not always through suspense account. Only one-sided errors are rectified through suspense account. Done. So then both revenue and capital nature transactions are recorded in receipts and payment account. This question was covered in TOFA. You remember our TOFA? If you had attended our face-to-face -face marathon revision or watched it, I had shared a list of true or false questions to you people to take it as a test. So in that very list on NPO chapter, we had covered this very question. Let me show it to you. So this is the fifth one. Yeah, ninth chapter NPO. Receipts and payment account is the question based on true or false for two marks. Covered in ninth TOFA. Let's see. TOFA number nine. So in this TOFA, we spoke about receipts and payment so receipts and payment we don't have to think whether it will cover uh, capital or revenue it will involve both so that's the wait wait let me show where is it receipts and payment is a summary of all capital receipts and payments the answer with reasoning is here answer is false why receipts and payment account is a summary of all cash and bank receipts irrespective of the fact whether they are of capital or revenue nature so for each of the TOFA true or false you had taken, I had even given the reason in the summary so that you don't be, you won't be confused as to what to write when this question comes in the exam. So not just telling you true or false, the reason also was very clearly put across to you in TOFA. So if you had taken our TOFA, if you had followed the instructions, there was no chance that you could have missed this fifth question as well. So, so far, 5 on 5, 10 marks right, straight from what we've done in class. Next one, sixth one. Fixed charge generally covers all the assets of the company, including future one. Fixed charge, floating charge. I think a lot of you would have got tricked by this one. You might be wondering as to where is this question from. The sixth sub question is from chapter 10 company accounts. This is from debenture traffic, true or false, two marks. The reason being, if you remember when we discussed debentures, I told you types of debentures. I told you there is no concept of unsecured debentures, but Debentures can be having fixed charge or floating charge. Fixed charge means a specific asset is tagged to these debentures. Meaning those assets have to be sold to redeem these debentures. If you sell those assets, such money can't be used for anything else. Floating charge means debentures have rights over all the assets equally. Get it? So we discussed this. And the same thing was there. We didn't have it anywhere in TOFA, but a similar point was very clearly discussed in our class. I hope you remember this discussion in our class. I will check if it is part of my theory notes what I basically made you write here. It, I have made you write in the class but uh, we can check if it is part of our notes here as well. When we spoke about types of debentures. This is our class notes. I am using the Sheshadipura morning batch file. Okay, it's not here. But when we discuss types of debentures, it was clearly written. Types of debentures, Ali. One of the point is Mm, secured and unsecured debentures. Unsecured concept is not there is what I told. I told secured can be either fixed charge or floating charge. So we can say that this point was also very clearly covered. Now let's go to question number B. 1A is done. Now let's see question 1B. 1B is about difference between provisions and contingent liabilities. Oh God, how many of you have got kicked out of the class because you didn't tell me the meaning of provision in class? How many times have we discussed what is provision, what is provision, what is provision? Contingent liability is a possible obligation. I would say it is dependent on happening or non-happening of a future uncertain, uncontrollable act. This too, we had taken the example of girlfriend becoming wife, Girlfriend is a contingent liability, wife is a liability, a contingent liability can become a liability dependent on happening or non-happening of what? Future uncertain uncontrollable act. 
and we also told you want to take your girlfriend home but not allowed so what do we do we create provision so provision is created only if it fulfills two conditions probable estimate or a probable outflow reliable estimate we did in the same definitions this among the first few classes second or third class is when you would have discussed this would have been part of your third class class 3 when we discuss provisions and contingent liabilities so if you would have read that you could have easily written that answer and then got four marks here and this four marker the marks are not decided based on the length of your answer if you have written the meaning of provision if you have written the meaning of contingent liability correctly you would be awarded full four marks even if it comes down to only three to four lines so it's not about the length it's about the correctness of the answer that is counted so 1b is from chapter 1 theoretical framework based on provisions and contingent liabilities it's a short note question difference between for four marks and this was also covered in our class shall we see one c now so there we go let's go to question 1c this question 1c is from depreciation purchased a machinery 130 Twenty thousand freight and installation charges. Another machine was purchased for fifty thousand. Sold the old machinery and uh, new machine was purchased. So basically, there are three machines. Under existing practice, companies charging depreciation at twenty percent per annum original cost, that is SLM. However, company decided to adopt WDB. So in this question, they are changing their method of depreciation from SLM to WDB. So there are two assets. One old asset is sold. One third asset is purchased. And you change the method of depreciation from SLM to WDB. Oh my God, four marks, sir! You didn't do this in class, is it so? Come, let's have a look. One C is from Chapter Five, Depreciation, and this is based on change in the method of depreciation. A ledger account based question. You are expected to do ledger accounts for four marks, and this question was same to same covered with few different numbers. Two assets, one asset sold, one more asset purchased. Change from SLM to WDB. It was there. It was part of our classroom discussion. Question number fourteen in our classroom discussion, and not just there. If you had celebrated Dasara with me in ten, ten, or ten, ten, you would have got this question there as well. Same to same question with few different numbers are there in our ten, ten, or ten, ten as well. So let me show it to you. Firstly, from our class notes. Question number fourteen, classroom discussion. So let's go to depreciation. This is our depreciation chapter, question number fourteen. Change from SLM to WDB. One second-hand machinery, another machinery. One of it is sold. We were doing SLM for first three years, then we change it to WDB, and there is profit or loss on sale of the asset also. Exactly same to same question, topic-wise, and the numbers are just a little different. Numbers are just a little different. And now I'll tell you how was it in our TOEFA. TOEFA, if you remember, I had shared this answer sheet also at that. Day one was consignment question. Pretty unfortunate consignment. I don't know how much effort said you put in. No question from consignment came. Oh God. See, we had discussed uh, day four of our ten 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 ten. We had a proper question on accommodation of bill. So if you'd have done this again, you'd have done that fifteen marker question in exam. Those of you who skipped the question in the exam, skipped the bills of exchange chapter, you might have found it very difficult. Fifteen marks of bills of exchange is tough one to skip. Yeah, ha! Here it is. Have a look. Machinery one, two, three. Machinery number one, number two. SLM was followed, and then later we change it to WDV. So SLM to WDV change in the method of depreciation. Few different numbers, but three machines. Machinery number one and two is there. After some time, you sell machinery number one, and then the same date you buy machinery number three. See here, machinery number two is sold, and on the same date you purchase machinery number three. So this is the exact same topic-based question that was asked in this very examination for four months. Numbers are different. Here it is one lakh thirty. There it is forty. Otherwise, same to same topic. So twenty marks. What was part of your compulsory question? I am showing it to you right out of our classroom, right out of our classroom. So nothing is a uh, part where in which you have not discussed. Everything is what we have discussed in class. Coming down to question number two now. In question number two, <coughs> this was a bouncer. I think lot of them messed it up. Lot of them thought this question is on amended cash book. 
I got messages right after the exam at 5 p.m. saying that, Sir, is the BRS question based on amended cash book? I have done amended cash book. Is it right? This question was not on amended. Sir, reason. Very simple. They have given balance as per cash book as 2,6400. And they are telling it didn't match with balance as per passbook. Okay. Then what do they want? They told it does not agree with balance as per passbook. They have given the analysis. They have given the reasons for differences. And at the end, they have asked you to prepare BRS. That's it. Preparation of BRS would have been the case. So there are eight adjustments, one mark for each of the adjustments, one mark for each of the adjustments, eight adjustments. And if you get the end answer correct, two marks for it. So that's how 10 marks will be divided. And those of you who done straight away amended cash book and then BRS after, you might lose few marks. But if you've done, uh, what would say BRS before and then amended cash book and then done BRS after amended cash book also, then you would get full marks. Some part of the answer which is extra would be knocked out. Yeah. So let's see <coughs> these adjustments. I've not done the exact same question. So these adjustments in separation, we've covered it in class. So these separate, separate adjustments put together, they made one new question. So first one is uh, payment side of the cash book overcasted. So this was covered in our class. So question number two, a BRS, this question, we should prepare BRS with cash book as starting point, 10 marks, not the same question, but all the adjustments are covered in class. I can show it to you. The first one is payment side of cash book overcasted. This adjustment obviously we did it. Then check off rupees 180,000 was not taken in the bank column. This is also very obvious adjustment. We have done this. Then 20th December debit balance of 8460 on the previous day was brought forward as credit balance. Balance has done upper niche. We have done this also in class. And the interesting part, several other things are very similar. So checks which were issued only partly it was deposited, other part not deposited. We have done similar adjustments. I can show it to you adjustment by adjustment if you want from our class notes. The interesting one was this. A customer from whom we collected money, we have given him discount. And after giving discount, we have wrongly taken the gross amount. We should have taken the net amount. So that adjustment also we have done not 3%, not 60,000. But different percentage and different amount. You've covered it by way of an adjustment in the class. You just need to go through your BRS class note and you'll be able to find it. If you want, I can show this adjustment to you right now. See this uh, discount part, right? So this is our morning batch file. I'll go to BRS chapter. So in the BRS chapter, if you observe, the will come from the beginning. So first few questions were easy ones. No, not here. Checks, interest created in passbook only, direct deposit, no, not this, not this. Checks received but not clear, not this. Bills collected, no advice received, wrong debate, not subsidy, direct payment, insurance charges, credit column over costed. This was there in this question and um, have a look here. Uh, discount erroneously included. Discount erroneously included in bank column. We did 4% and 4 lakh in class. They have given question on 3% and 60,000 in exam. But the adjustment is very same. So that's with regard to question number 2A. This 10 marks from BRS is a lottery literally. I don't know who missed it. Few of them had marked that BRS question is difficult. All of the adjustments were very easy. Very soon right after this video, I'll come out with detailed solution discussion video. In that, I'll solve the Answers, I will not tell this way I done, this way I done. I won't say that. I literally solve all the answers in the class. You can watch that video very soon as well. And I'll solve it in that. You can compare your answer if you have a, if you have written the number in your question paper and then got it home. So very easy one. It wouldn't take even about eight minutes to solve this 10 marker question. Then uh, B, this question was before preparation of trial balance, following errors were formed. So they've given these errors. We need to rectify this. So this question, not the exact question, but all the adjustments what were there from this chapter to unit 8 rectification of errors, yeah, journal entries. So we have covered it in class. Let me show. The first one is on repairs made to building were debited to building account. So repairs made to building were debited to building account. Rectification will involve building and repairs. Let me show here. This is our solution sheet. I'll say. 
repairs. Have a look here. This very adjustment. This is applied laboratories question. Question number 10 from our HS material. Question number 5A from November 2020 question paper. Repairs to building. Repair expenditure wrongly debited building now rectified. We've done the same thing. But we've done after final accounts. There they've asked only after trial balance. You don't have to replace repair account with P&L adjustment. So this first adjustment is done. Alright. And the next one. An amount of 3000 due to Shamla had been written off as bad debts in the previous year. Recovered in the current year. But it has been wrongly posted to personal accounts. Bad debt recovered. This question is on. Sometimes the search option doesn't work. Show it to you. So bad debts recorded. No, not this. Next. Ah, here it is. <coughs> Have a look. So the bad debts were recovered. They were wrongly recorded to personal account of Mahesh Chan. Cash to Mahesh Chan is the wrong entry. They should have written cash to bad debts recovered. So we reverse this cash to Mahesh Chand as Mahesh Chand to cash and the rectification entry was Mahesh Chand account debit to bad debts recovered. This is part of our class material question number 5. So we have covered this very question in the class and the exact same adjustment with a different name Shyamlal has come in the exam. Furniture purchase for office use has been entered in purchase day book. So we have done the exact same thing of this as well. I can show you every adjustment from nowhere else but exclusively from your class notes or whatever we've done in class. Have a look here, furniture. See, purchase of office table for rupees 300 entered through purchase book. So purchase of goods wrongly entered in purchase book, we have rectified this. So I have not just given the end answer, I have given you step to step answer, wrong entry, reversal of wrong entry, correct entry, reversal of wrong entry plus correct entry being rectification entry to the core and we have the same thing here. Goods purchased from Ram Singh amount in rupees 8000 8, has been remained unrecorded so far. Simple journal entry, they have skipped, you pass, they miss, you hit, done. College fees of proprietor sons 15,000 debited to audit fees. We have done exactly one more of this as well. So I can show you audit fee. Audit fee is not there. Uh, no, I think this search option doesn't work at times. Okay, maybe we have not used the exact term audit fees. But it is drawings of the partner wrongly written as business expense. Now reverse. We have done something of that exact same thing. Receipt of rupees 4500 from one person wrongly credited to another person. Reverse. We have done this as well in our Rani problem. 5678-8765 bank account. In that problem we had this adjustment. Goods amounting to rupees 6200 had been written by a customer and were taken to inventory but no entry was made. This is based on goods and on return or approval. We were supposed to record it, not record it. So we have done this as well. I can show you uh, inventory. Inventory. Aha, have a look here. So this is the one. <coughs> Whenever inventory is there, we should reverse the sale entry and then write the entry for like stock lying with customer. Goods sent on return or approval. Same adjustment. Though we had not done the chapter of goods sent on return or approval, when we did rectification of errors, I made you write goods are only sent, not sold. Entry is made in the sales book. We should reverse the sales entry and also record the inventory which is lying with the customer because it belongs to us. Same to same thing. That is the concept on which this question had come. 1500 wages to workmen for office furniture had been charged to wages. So this is capital expense. It should be included in the cost of the furniture. But it is wrongly written to wages. Same thing. See here. Wages for making showcases charged to wages. Instead of showcase, they have used the word furniture. So wrongly they have written wages to cash. We should write cash to wages. Correct entry will be. We should reverse it and then write furniture to cash. Same thing, furniture. But there we had used the word showcase in the question, here it is not. This is again from your class notes. This file, what I am using it to show is morning batch file from Sheshadipuram. Even in Jainagar batch, evening batch, Sheshadipuram evening batch, Jainagar evening batch, also same to same is there. You guys can check into your class notes as well. So guys, 
everything is fada fada from we what we discussed only salary paid to clerk 12000 has been debited to personal account so this is well i can show you this exact adjustment also salary salary paid to clerk wrongly debited to clerk account they have written clerk to sell clerk to cash they have written salary to cash so you reverse cash to clerk to cash by writing cash to clerk and write salary to clerk 125 125 same to same here amount is 12000 and purchase of goods from raghav amounting to rupees 20000 has been wrongly entered through sales book if you remember we had a detailed discussion on this word through if it is entered through sales book what to do everything same to same thing again we have it here as well so entire 10 marks rectification of errors i'll tell you nothing has come from what we have not discussed everything is what we have discussed so 20 plus 20 40 marks down let's now start with our question number 3 are you all ready for more surprises this question is based on accommodation of a bill there are t and j two friends who did, i would say accommodated the bill with each other and then got it discounted and the bill got dishonored there is one more bill and that bill also got dishonored one of the partner becomes bankrupt and 50 paise in rupee could have been recovered from him so question number 3a for chapter 6 unit 1 bills of exchange accommodation of bills is a topic journal entry is what's expected 15 marks majority of them told this question was difficult it was not at all this question is exactly similar to question number 16 from our class on discussion except for the fact that numbers are different obviously numbers can be different 6.1 bills of exchange question number 16 anil and sanjay question 2 by 3 1 by 3 is the ratio there is one so we had discussed in detail in fact in the midst of the crowd where people were skipping bills of exchange chapter because it is not important i made you do extra questions over and above what is there in yashas material on the topic of what to say accommodation have a look here we did extra questions extra question number 1 sorry sorry yeah extra question upon accommodation of a bill after we detailedly understood accommodation remember we did extra question extra question number 1 extra question number 2 extra question number 2 extra question number 3 and then we went on to the regular questions and in class whatever you solved as question number 16 anil and sanjay question very same is this one so anil and sanjay they drew a bill on they one person drew the bill on the other they discounted it and then shared the proceeds then what happened on the maturity date one party failed to pay so they raised one more bill got it discounted before the maturity date one became insolvent and only 50 paise in rupee could have been recovered and that we had done the accounting entries in both in the books of anil and sanjay i remember we did this and this was the last problem in our one of the days class you people were very lazy to copy and i told you to copy this after class both anil and sanjay i was asking do you want me to do simultaneously or finish one part and then do the other so very same problem different thing the questions are t and j and the question i had come in the exam for 50 marks so clearly people who told that this question of bills of exchange was difficult have not properly done their class notes also and question 3b was choice between 1 and 2 account current and average due date oh god they gave choice between each other so you could not write both you had to write only one so i don't know what have you chosen if it was me i would have selected average due date because it will take lesser time and the next part is i am hearing complaints throughout that account current you know don't know how to present the entire answer so account current question um receivable and payable both are there it is a computation table has to be prepared because we can't call account current as an account no so this question was for 5 marks and this question was covered same to same even with numbers never 10 10 not 10 10 day 6 question number 6 don't believe me come let me show you show it to you so this is our 10 10 not 10 file i'll show you question number 6 <coughs> from day 6 see have a look you remember i remember lot of students asking me i had taken for uh, promissory note i had not given three grace days 
you asked me sir you didn't give three grace days do you remember now do you recall now and i told you in the question when it comes write it because ICA material sometimes they have given three grace days for promissory note. Some days they have not given. You don't give promissory note three grace days and write a note in the exam. Yeah, then same to same thing. The name is different. See the question. <coughs> G and H, four thousand five hundred. Not four thousand. Let me see. Uh, invoice date November twenty six. February four, I think same dates are there. See fourth of February and twenty uh, sixth of November is not there. Then March twenty first. See there is cash paid, goods sold, and then uh, it will become purchases, purchases. See written purchases, purchases. I think not this. One of the question was exactly same numbers. Two thousand fifty. Ah, sorry, not this one. The numbers are not same, but it is very much the same. So there is one promissory note. And that's what we wrote here: bills payable, promissory note, three grace days. Remember that same to same thing. Seven thousand five hundred it is here. Here it is fifteen thousand. Otherwise, rest of it is sorry. Here it is five thousand. Otherwise, the rest of the question is same. Four thousand five hundred opening balance, and then we have three thousand seven fifty goods sold. Then there is goods sold. After that, there is promissory note. Then there is goods sold by H to G. Invoice date is given. So we took invoice date twenty sixth of November. Have a look. Have a look. 26th of November, 26th of November, December 17th, December 7th, December 17th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amounts are different. December 7th, December 17th, 16th of November, 26th of November, 16th November, 26th November. This is again an examination question as well. Previously, in one of the mock tests, this question had come, and uh, same to same question we did in 10th and 10th. So this is what we have already done in class as well. You guys get that? As I mentioned, done in ten, 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 ten. Let's see six point four average due date is the next question. So next question average due date journal sorry January they have given sixty, fifty, seventy, forty two thousand some dates. But this question is not on bills of exchange. This question is on credit period given for one week. So you should add plus seven days for each of these dates of transaction. That will be the due date. And for those due dates, you should take the average of it. And I had mentioned the very same thing in our class. We have done an exact concept. Have a look here. Average due date computation table. Five marks question. Extra question number three from our classroom discussion. This question was not part of HS material, but I had made you do few extra questions if you remember in the class. And this is question number three from your extra questions. Let me show. Extra question. Extra question. <laughs> See question number extra question number three. So this was neutral and Mr. Positive two months credit. So I told when you add two months to these due dates, you should not add grace days. There is no three grace days concept. I made you write the same thing here. Have a look. Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, have a look here. For your understanding, this problem it is credit period, not bill of exchange. So we should only add that period given. We should not add three grace days. I told the same thing, and then we had done the problem. So in this problem, we arrived at average due date, but the payment was not on average due. The payment was made. He desired to make payment little later. So for such period, we identified the period of delay, and then we computed interest and added the interest to the amount of principal payable to identify the total amount payable. Yes, read this question. What does it say? <clears throat> question number three B. It says that these are the transactions. One week is the credit period. He settles his account on thirty first of March. That is not average due date. Calculate the interest and the amount that should be paid using average due date. They have also asked us to take ninth of January as base date. In fact, ICA made it easy for us by giving ninth of January. Why? When you take second of January plus seven days, it will come to ninth of January. That should be our starting point. Got it? So they had given another hint. I don't know how many of you got it right. My fingers are crossed, hoping that you would have got this one right. Because if you have got average rate question wrong, no, I'll understand. I can feel how you might be feeling. Then the question was on X and Y are partners sharing business in profit and loss two is to three, and it's an admission question. Z is admitted. This is a very basic question. 
not of the complexity that we discussed in class at all no jlp discussion no goodwill computation adjustment nothing very simple revaluation of few assets are there debtors pay provision is there building is also revalued and liability is revalued some actual liability simple four revaluations and that's it nothing else your revaluation account will have some six items and then you need to do partners capital account and balance sheet after admission of z 10 marks this is a very easy problem the questions that you have done in the class on admission are way more complex than the question that was here so question number 4a is from 8th chapter partnership on admission that asked you to prepare ledger as well as balance sheet for 10 marks we have covered more complex questions in class we have not covered this question we have covered more complex questions in class if you would have to have a look the number of questions that we did on partnership admission in class is intense we have a look question number 16 these are all our what to say the goodwill competition questions see we have done way more complex questions revaluation partners capital account balance sheet with more adjustments with goodwill computation with uh, what do you say and lot of memorandum revaluation the account based problems and all we did but the question that you got in the exam was a easy toffee i hope you people have jumped onto this toffee and then got it right as well next question is on income and expenditure income and expenditure of young boys club is given so they wanted you to do receipts and payment as well as opening and closing balance sheet so what did they want they wanted to prepare receipts and payment opening and closing balance sheet again good percentage of people told that npo question was difficult i really don't understand why because this young boys club question with adjustments on general expenses and audit fees is not a new question question number 4b 9th chapter npo preparation of receipts and payment and closing balance sheet this questions receipts and payment preparation for 10 marks was question number 20 from our classroom discussion and it is question number 4a from december 2021 examination and question number 5c from january 2021 examination let me show it to you this is two time examination question i had shown this question to you in class right after we finished npo chapter and i had solved this also in class mm -hmm. let's see if you talk about adjustments there is four adjustments for subscription which requires us to open subscription account there is salary outstanding adjustment general expenses uh, insurance prepaid is included in general expense and audit fees is still unpaid adjustment and there is that owned a freehold lease ground adjustment get this let me show it to you question number 20 from our class notes first npo chapter this is our one stop sheet where we have solutions to all the questions from all the chapter question number 20 the name was also very similar youth club is the name but here they have told young boys club what is it young boys club is the word that they have used same to same i'll show it to you see salary adjustment general expense include prepaid insurance audit fees same guys same thing and subscription we had to prepare one subscription account numbers are little different i agree numbers are little different i agree but the adjustments are same to same and talking about the examination that i mentioned that this is part of 4a question number 4a december 21 and 5c january 21 let me show january 21 question number 5c this is our january 21 solution discussion sheet i had shared one past examination rtp mtp sheet in the same sheet question number 5c same to same adjustments everything is same just the numbers are different 5c have a look atk club question same to same so printing and stationery general expense had an adjustment i have solved the question little differently but see salaries included prepaid insurance and uh, audit fees in general fees same adjustment and subscription detailed ledger and another thing that i told is this is part of question number 4a december 21 december 21 question number 4a salaries including prepaid and uh, general expenses and audit adjustment audit fees and uh, subscription account same to same adjustments and free old lease property was also there in the balance sheet see here free old lease property was also there in the adjustment this the name was little different they used the word women club in the examination paper issued by ICI in the examination december 2021 amidst covid literally lottery i don't know how many of you 
if you had done preparations well no the pattern of the paper was little hatke i agree consignment didn't come bills of exchange came for 15 marks final accounts they asked balance sheet only not trading and pnl it was and good set on return or approval didn't come it is it was little different i agree but it was not at all tough it was unique but not tough but throughout from day one i've been telling you people not to go by any pattern don't see the past pattern but basically see see it like any time any question can come from any chapter so don't go by the weightage given by uh, uh, how to say that section wise uh, chapter wise skill weightage is there i told you not to avoid by that if anyone would have done by that weightage you know this paper is gone for them i mean to say they wouldn't have been very happy after the exam but if they would have kept this weightage aside and then prepared for the exam trust me would have done splendidly when they well in this paper question number 5 a so let's see question number 5a now where was question number 5a from it was on preparation of triple column cash book again one of the most neglected part people neglect chapter 1 chapter 2 you saw how many marks came from these two chapters and triple column cash book is something again everyone will you know saying like uh, this won't come easy but if you can understand we have done multiple two questions if i'm not wrong in the class the big ones in triple column cash book topic let me show have a look here cash book sheet if i come down we are discussed in detail what to write what to not write in cash book this is our class notes and welcome here we discussed in detail one triple column cash book question number 3 i solved it in class in give it as homework and we also discussed question number 4 in detail and i can show you how much time we took to do this i think one of the days this is our index when we update daily basis me what we've done if you come to cash book here see here one entire day session number 16 2 and a half hours we've dedicated exclusively for doing cash book and nothing else so this was on 15th of july 2022 friday second session 10 o'clock to 10:30 to 11 o'clock to 1:30 we've done cash book question number 3 and 4 if you were present that day at that time in the class or if you watch that session recorded you would have definitely aced this and i can tell this for any of the questions that i told right now as to which session which har had we done this question because i don't want any complaints sir later saying that sir you did jokes but you didn't teach correctly i know you won't say that so cash book question done 5b r and s this is partnership they wanted us to compute only goodwill under capitalization and super profit method this is also done in class and just to ensure that we stay on the safer side i made you do plenty of extra questions on goodwill computation you remember so this was part of our extra question number 3 and extra question number 4 that we discussed in class let me show extra question number 3 and extra question number 4 on admission in admission sheet it's there 8.2 admission sheet extra question number 3 and extra question number 4 extra question should be here good will computation no <coughs> sorry example question number 3 see these questions were not there in our material but we still did dosa company example remember this is on super profit method and example question number 4 on capitalization method very similar thing but they have given two capitals we just need to add both uh, 14 and 12 to identify the total capital and based on that we will compute however very soon i will be sharing with you all a detailed solution video wherein we will discuss all the answers from basic from the basic concept yeah so you can wait for that video so this five marks also is definitely not a surprise we have done it in class so let's quickly see question number 5c now as to where is it from YC is a balance sheet based question they have given the balance sheet what do they want us to do they have given set of differences while preparing pnl account that forgot on this so these items are to be adjusted this is an question where you need to do rectification as well as prepare balance sheet we have not done this question we have not done similar question we have done better question in the class we have done question where there was rectification required plus trading pnl and balance sheet in this question it is more lighter more easier more less time taking why they have asked us to do rectification 
No trading, no P&L. Straight balance sheet. So I can give it to you on this note that this question is unique. Similar question is not there in ICA material. More complex or more difficult question is there in ICA material as well as in our class notes. But this is definitely not difficult because uh, only balance sheet is required. You don't have to do trading and claim. And rectifications are not quite big. It is simple prepaid expense and outstanding commission rate. Yeah. I'll however be solving this question in detail in the upcoming video. This is one unique but not very different question and not very tempting. This time they allocated only 10 marks to this chapter of final accounts. So they didn't want to give a lengthier one. So we have not done this question. I'll agree. But we've done better question in class. Now let's see question number 6. Question number 6 a was on uh, what do you say <coughs> uh, issue of shares. There are 2 lakh equity shares issued and what happened allotment me there is premium money was due was fully received and J who holds 5000 shares failed to pay allotment and call money Mr. K who failed to pay call money one shareholder failed to pay allotment and call money one shareholder failed to pay only call money and these shares were forfeited and reissued so this kind of question it's part it's reissued and reissued at discount of 1 rupee so we have done exactly similar question with different number of shares of our in the class so two shareholders one shareholder fails to pay allotment and call money one shareholder fails to pay only call money both their shares are forfeited and reissued we've done it i'll tell you which question is it so this question is 15 marks they required us to prepare a journal and balance sheet and similar question is covered in class get it then we have question 6b question 6b is property plant and equipment many of them are wondering where is this question from this question was from chapter 5 depreciation a theory question based on directly attributable cost for 5 months this was also covered in this that asked us to quote some examples of expenditure incurred to bring the assets to its location and condition necessary before it is incorporated or before it is used. I made you write one big list of expenses and I discussed, we had a story discussing what expenses will be included, what expense will not be included. I'll tell you what you would remember. I told like all the expenses will be included except for inauguration expenses. Very same thing. I had given you list of expenses. I made you write this. I didn't make you read from theory or from our material. I made you write this in your class notes. If you had attended class, you would have written definitely this. So what and all will cost include? It will not include inauguration, repairs and then interest. But it will include packaging, loading, transportation, freight, octroi, unloading, unpacking, assembly, engineering cost, installation or erection, trial run, tax and duties if not recoverable. They have asked 5, I have given 16, I have given 11, I have given 10 items. If you would have remembered 5 out of this and then you would have written, you would have easily got full marks, full 5 marks because they had asked only 5. So this is our question paper analysis and I didn't just do analysis for 100 marks. I am telling you 125, 125 marks is not new, is everything that we have done in class. I hope this video was helpful and you people will understand what is the intensity with which we teach in class. The coverage that we do in class is 100% because more than 100% nobody can cover. So there is complete push from our side to do every small concept from every small paragraph that's there in ICA material and not to leave anything untouched. So that when you take examination, you are not sitting there to pass by chance, but you deserve to pass and you will come to join CA Inter with us very soon. And on this note, all I want to tell you people is to be aware of the new batch that we've started for CA Foundation May 2023 examination from the team of Fishes Academy. This is our face-to-face -face batch. The batch has already started. You can access live online class. You can watch it recorded or you can join us face-to-face -to, -face to watch this class. And the recorded backup will be available if in case you miss any of our sessions. 550 plus hours of comprehensive coverage is promised to you people. This is excluding our revision classes. You knew how we did our marathon revision classes and how intensive was it. And best of the best study meter will be available to you people. You saw the coverage now. And weekly tests and unit wise tests is what I conduct by accounts progress tracker by TOFA. And we have something new coming up called who wants to be an accountant which will also happen in your class. We'll have daily quizzes to cover the topic unit wise what we've done in the class. 
marathon revision classes which is a great success all thanks to you people for this attempt we will do more of such for the upcoming attempts also and performance assessment and mentorship is always there in helping you people in the journey of ca foundation so very soon we'll be waiting to see you all in the detailed examination paper answer discussion video and uh, there's a early bird batch starting for ca intermediate also from december 27th you can enroll for the same if you have high hopes of clearing ca foundation welcome to ca inter even before the results comes finish one paper minimum and you'll have an advantage of reading only seven papers for the rest of the time so very soon i'm going to come live again on youtube discussing about what should be your plan to go ahead after this examination of ca foundation how to plan ca inter what to start what not to start what to do and what not to do i hope this video was helpful please like share and then subscribe this youtube channel for more such interesting content and also let us know in the comments as to how did your examination go and also tell what more type of videos do you want from us and this entire discussion and analysis whatever i have done it is in the same sheet that is already shared to you during your class comprising of all the past examinations answer sheets uh, analysis including rtp and mtps so this sheet whatever is shared to you which is from november december 21 so every attempt ka paper november 19 may 19 with weightage in past examinations it's in the same sheet and i will be soon updating all the answers to all of these questions i've just started so i'll update answer to all of these questions also in this very sheet got it guys remember life is not a battle to be struggling it's a game to be enjoyed till the time you learning something you are having fun it's all good the day you guys either stop learning something new or stop having fun trust me you might start struggling because you might be in a battle so thumb rule to stay happy is pretty simple it is to stay in the game so one last time on this day i have just one simple question for all of you are we in the game i hope the answer is yes we are in the game see you in ca inter till then tata bye bye take care and get lost